My guest today is Jennifer Marsman. Jennifer, how are you doing? Thank you for having me, David. Oh, thanks for being back here. How many times has it been that you've been on my show? I don't know. I don't know. But it, it's been yeah. a long time, though. I it has think. been a while. Yeah, it has been long. a while. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, it's been so long that you and I each have different jobs. We do. We do I miss before. working with you, though. Oh, me too. You're Absolutely. a great person to work with. Oh, thank you for saying so. I uh, echo those sentiments about you. Uh, what are you doing now? I, I, I know it's cool. Yeah, it's great. So I'm the principal engineer on the AI for Earth team. Well, just the name sounds cool. I know, isn't it? Um, so AI for Earth is a new team at Microsoft, and um, it started as a grant program, but really it's it's so much more than that. Okay. So back in December of 2017, um, Brad Smith, who's the president of Microsoft, um, publicly announced at a conference in Paris that Microsoft was going to be committing $50 million over five years mm -hmm. um, towards anyone doing data science or machine learning work in the areas of agriculture, water, climate change, and biodiversity. Hmm. So a variety of things to um, to help with save the planet with kind All of right. some of its hardest challenges. Save the time with the data. I like it. Exactly, exactly. Because when you think about it, oftentimes we're asking people who have the fewest resources, so nonprofits and, mm. and such, to solve the hardest problems that our Earth is facing. Mm. Um, it's They're the ones tackling a lot of these conservation issues and things like that. And so I think it's really a way to just um, give back uh, where Microsoft can in terms of you know cloud compute credit, in terms of um, machine learning knowledge, and the things that we are good at, we can help share and, and make available to anyone. Um, so it's not limited to a certain group, um, nonprofits, uh, startups, um, academics. Um, we got a lot of academic grants. Um, but large corporations, too, or individuals working on projects, like anyone is eligible or welcome to submit a, a grant. Okay. Yeah, and we um, every quarter we review all the grants and um, are able to uh, award grants. And then um, on my role on the team specifically is I own what we call the, the three E's, um, which are um, engineering, uh, evangelism, and education. Hmm. Um, and so in terms of uh, engineering, um, we're doing a, a lot of different work. Like one of the reasons I was so excited about taking the job is there is um, a lot of uh, collaboration with Microsoft Research, and I was really excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, I had done some work on um, like uh, d been doing a lot of talking about the Farm Beats project, you know, and that's one of the, the Farm Beats project. Farm Beats project, yeah. So that's the one um, using precision agriculture uh, to be able to. Um, predict, um, like uh, basically enable a data-driven farm. So mm -hmm. it can do things like predict uh, what um, what areas would need water. If you're doing precision irrigation, for okay. example, you could say, we need water here or here or here. Hmm. Um, it could enable, um, there's cameras everywhere, so uh, the farmer has a real-time view into their farm. Okay. Um, it enables um, things like um, precision pesticides is one of my favorites because uh, pesticides are really... They're not really a win for anyone, right? It's they're, it's they have it's side effects. They have side effects, so yeah, it's, it's not a win for the insects. I know that it's not a win for the insects, which is good. So pesticides are not all bad, but if you can use them more strategically, like okay. that's actually really helpful because if there's you know if you're just kind of spraying them all over everything, yeah, then it's into the water table yep, and so exactly on. very good. It does work leak in the water table. It's bad for the environment in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's bad for us who are eating the food that's grown there, Fair and point. it's also bad for the farmers because pesticides are really expensive, okay. and so they're spending even more money on right. you know. So like if you can use machine learning to predict where the pests are going to be mm. and then only spray pesticides there like that's a win or you could use computer vision and have it focused on like you know certain crops and see oh okay we, we see that these pests have moved in oh. now we apply so, so those kind of things are, are all possible um, so that's one really cool thing. So I, I had done some early just kind of speaking on that topic and I got to know um, Ranveer Chandra, who's the principal researcher there. And so um, then kind of when I found out about the AI for Earth team, I was like, oh, I got to get involved because I was so excited about the work that he was doing and the work of some of the other stuff that's happening there. So it's really exciting to get to be, you know, a small part of it um, indeed. So. In terms of engineering, I kind of do, we, we are collaborating with Microsoft Research. We're actually building some of our own machine learning models. Okay, so you're not um, just giving money to these Exactly. It's not just a grant program. It kind they're, of they're getting Jennifer, too, and your peers as well. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing... Um, we're, we're kind of building some of our own models um, okay. like that could potentially be APIs. I mean, it could be something like a cognitive service in the future where are it's like specific a... specific projects? Yeah. Are you uh, doing them kind of like... Uh, uh, there, academic research. Kind of yeah, thing. there are some that are more um, 
almost like trend spotting of, oh, a lot of people could find this useful. So let's kind of extract that and see if we could build an API. So okay. things like species classification, right? A lot of people, I have this image of an animal, tell okay. me what animal it is, okay. um, is one example. Sure. Another example is um, land cover mapping, which is really useful for people doing you know urban planning and farming and a lot of these other things, meaning given um, some overhead imagery, mm -hmm. um, tell me, you know, pixel by pixel level, you know, this is water, this is a tree, this is... Um, you know, bare and it's a, a road or a building or something I can't okay. build on. So things like that. So those are some APIs that, that we are building. Hmm. And then um, education is one of the other things I own. So that is largely educating the grantees. Um, and they're, they're at a, a huge variety of levels. Like some of them may be nonprofits that maybe don't have as much machine learning knowledge. So it's kind of helping them take the, the first steps in that area. And then some of them, like especially the ones from academia, a lot of them are p getting their PhDs in machine learning. So we have postdocs in ML and such. And so they're mm -hmm. extremely good at um, ML and they maybe just don't know how could I use Azure to oh, okay. you know to train models at scale yeah, or something like that. Teach them the tooling for exactly. So that it's so I've tried to just develop an education plan where we can meet people wherever they're currently at on their machine learning journey and help them move forward. So that's kind of the education part of it. Okay. And so we covered engineering and education, and, and evangelism. then evangelism is the other one, which is fair. You and I are both somewhat familiar with that oh, already. What is tell okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, in terms of evangelism, that's just mainly getting the word out. So it yeah. it would entail things like um blogging, tweeting, speaking at conferences, things like that. So okay. just making making it known. All right. Uh, are, are you uh, collaborating with specific, some of the people that have the grants? Are you collaborating with them to help? Yeah. Tell me about yeah. a cool project you're doing there. Oh my gosh, there's so many cool projects. I don't even know where to start. Um, so there's um, a couple that I talked about in my talk today at CodeMash. Mm -hmm. um, one is um, some work that's being done by the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. And they are doing work around trying to detect poachers. Um, w when you consider um, these, all right, so imagine we're on uh, a big uh, conservancy in mm -hmm. Africa, and this is where they're trying to protect um, uh, rhinoceroses, rhinos, and, and elephants and such. And these are really large, big animals. Mm -hmm. So these these areas um, actually are like hundreds of miles apart, So like or hundreds of miles that they can roam. So it's a right. quite big distributed area. And they have limited number of um, park rangers and patrollers to, to protect the animals. And so if you can use... Um, computer vision to find out like and, and machine learning to find out where the um where the um, animals actually are uh -huh. and then also machine learning to predict where are the poachers going to be mm -hmm. um you can you can do some really interesting stuff there and so they're actually using um drones flying overhead i was going to ask you that is yeah that, is it satellite it, photos or it, it trees, actually is cameras on trees yeah they're, they're mobile drones so currently what the the state of the art was is drones flying overhead yeah. across this these large areas uh -huh. and then they're sending back um infrared in in real time so it's infrared uh -huh. feed and the reason for that is it, it, it most poaching actually happens at night and it's very cool and dark at night and so the, the heat of a person I shows see. up in infrared yeah, or, um, of or of an animal exactly so you can recognize okay here's a, a rhino or an elephant or a person or whatever hmm. um, from that and then if it's a person then if it's not one of the park rangers or the patrollers where hmm. you you know their locations if it's not one of those it's then you know it's a, a it's a poacher right someone is on the property who should not be and so in that case um, what happens is the drone can start following that person because you know once they once the animal's gone there's no undo so you gotta oh, yeah. kind of act very very fast so it has to be done in real time which yeah, makes so it even more challenging yeah yeah so that's um that's pretty so, cool yeah is it that, is is that in production now that is something that they're doing they're piloting it and yeah. they are they do have plans to um deploy it in some of these large conservation areas in in africa um and but, but there's a lot of cool research there's actually a couple different projects that they're doing all around this mm -hmm. um and so that's a that's a really thing but great work being done by um uh, University of Southern California there. And so they're an AI for Earth grant recipient um, doing work in that space. And then another one is, let's see, who should we talk about next? Um, so one of my, one of the ones I really love is um, this company called Wild Me. And they have a platform called Wild Book. So the company is Wild Me, their platform is Wild Book. And what they do is they are working on um, the problem they're trying to solve is essentially uh, being able to recognize individual animals without having to like tag them. So just using computer vision to recognize um, well, individual just animals. It's an, an elephant, but this is the same elephant that was exactly, like exactly miles away last month. Exactly, okay. that's exactly right. So it's not you know hot dog, not a hot dog, elephant, not an elephant. 
okay. it's a very clear this is elephant 5703 like this distinct okay. animal this is joe the elephant exactly <laughs> exactly and with a lot of these with i shouldn't say a lot but with some large mammals mm -hmm. they have very distinctive markings so mm -hmm. um you know as as us as human beings all have unique fingerprints mm -hmm. um zebra patterns stripe patterns are actually unique too the, yeah zebras actually have a unique you can use uh, tell them apart by their stripe patterns mm -hmm. all of them have a unique stripe pattern and then it's the same thing with a lot of um large cats and their okay. spot patterns mm -hmm. Um, and uh, like uh, elephants in the shape of their ear, um, whale sharks in their spot patterns. Mm -hmm. so there's there's all these couple of things. Sure, um, some of the turtles, large turtles in the the back of their shells, the spots on there. Really? So all kinds of oh giraffes too on their yeah. long neck, the torso area. That's a unique signature. So anyway, you can actually take that data then and like kind of build up a database of known animals that you've seen before. And then when you see another one again, you can be able to recognize that okay, we've seen that. So, so this is for migra migration patterns. Though. Yeah, so you can use it for a lot of things. So um, one of it is to, you know, where where are they and keep track of migration patterns. It can also be used to track things like um, uh, kind of seeing animals as they kind of come and go, like births and deaths and stuff, because when you do have a very large thing, you know, kind of what are those, um, how mm -hmm. do those things go? But migration patterns is one big one. Another one is um, just co-occurrences, like what animals are uh, like um, seen together a lot. Okay. That can be interesting data in terms of understanding, you know, mating patterns and things uh -huh. like that. Um, and so they are, um, that's another like really, really cool thing. But that's only the beginning. Like that in itself is really cool, that right? Very cool. Yes, the fact absolutely. that you can recognize I individual love animals. Doing a lot of animals. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So that's really cool. But th but it go here's where the story goes from good to great. Okay. Um, they're actually leveraging social media to be able to get even more interesting data. So for example, whale sharks is, are one example of something with these unique um, spot patterns on their backs. Hmm. And so um, if some random person, if, if you or I were to go on a, a whale watching trip, for example, and we t uh, like sh maybe shot a video of, oh, we saw some whales and it's so cool and we shot oh a video and then man. we posted it to YouTube. I hope we do because I've never been on a whale watching trip. Oh, <laughs> you should go, especially should when, totally you're, when you're visiting. Um, I, I did when I was still living in Seattle. Hmm. Um, yeah, you can get a lot of nuns right off the, just yeah. take a boat out and there's there's a lot of cool stuff there. Bucket um, list. Yeah, yeah, definitely go, go in Seattle. It's really nice. Um, so one of the things that you can do is, um, so anyway, they're, they're people on whale watching trips they take videos they upload it to YouTube and so they intent um, essentially have an intelligent agent which is um, something that that wakes up at like 10 p.m. every night it searches um, social uh, media so it, it can search videos. yeah I can search and those are all drones they don't have to buy right well yeah there's no drones needed right. ever because it's just people it's like essentially kind of crowdsourcing it right exactly so it wakes up it searches YouTube uh -huh. so it's just using some basic like NLP stuff to, to find the right things and, and searching searching certain text terms uh -huh. and then um, finding that information um, it also does an automatic uh, language translation using the Microsoft cognitive services as mm -hmm. well to to get the get it in the right language and then process um, in English so well I shouldn't say get it in the right language their model works in English so if no matter what language people are posting they can um, translate that into English okay. and then do uh, additional processing from there if it's all in the same language yeah so that's the, what they since they're a um, US based company they mm -hmm. did do it in English to begin and then um, once they have that information they can uh, look for information inside of the video that will tell um, when and where the the occurrence uh, or where they spotted the whale okay. so like if s someone like posted it in September uh, you know 2018 let's say and it says "Ooh, last month I saw this really cool whale then we know that it was in what did I just say August 2017 yeah a month yeah a month earlier yeah two different videos from two different people right exactly and then they match them up and then they actually will post a comment so if they don't have all the information if they can't figure out um, when um, and where the where when the sighting was and where the sighting was it'll actually automatically like this is ask no human question. need to do it it will yeah ask a question on, as a comment in the YouTube page and um, it, um, it's actually surprising the response rate because I was like are people going to respond to that if some like random thing is, is asking about because I'm not sure if I would or not but yeah. I actually looked at their response rate and it was much higher than I thought it would be I think hmm. a lot of times because like you post these vacation f you know you 
put your vacation videos up there and you're like, oh, everybody look, here's my cool vacation photos. And like your mom might say, that's nice, dear. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah. Well, I think what happens is that, uh, I don't know if those, but internet commenters are by and large just nasty, horrible people. YouTube so commenters when, are some of the worst. When yeah. you get a, 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 a comment nice of somebody one. that's actually yeah. interested yeah. and has more information, it, uh, you just sort of jump yeah, on Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The nice people. So, and so they, they, it's usually a positive comment and then, oh, you know, if it, if it didn't say like where it was, they'll ask where was this, you know, where did you see this or where did this happen? And so um, there's actually, I, I, I shouldn't give you a number because I don't remember it off the top of my uh -huh. head, but I want to say it's like around 50% at least, That's great. which I thought was like ha much higher than I was expecting. Um, but then once they have that information, um, they have all this data about the whale shark and then they can update it on whaleshark.org, which is mm -hmm. their wild book for whale sharks specifically. Oh. And they have similar wild books for, you know, giraffes and zebras and a lot of other animals too. Oh. Yeah. Now, what, what's so, posted on that side? If I go there, is it, is it uh, j just the videos or is it the, the analysis of the data? Yeah. Or? Well, you or can go to whaleshark.org and check it out yourself. But it's, it, um, it sh it'll show you the collection of all the pictures they've ever seen of that animal okay. um, are augmented oh, there. So, okay. So the pictures and, and videos yeah. grouped N not by actually a not specific animal. It's not actually video. It's actually because when they when they do the processing of the video, they actually extract frames. I okay. forgot to mention right. that part. So it's actually extracting. But they group them by things. an individual Yeah. Yeah. So animal. there's a page. There's like a landing page for each animal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So like, um, this there's is, one, this is Willie, and you, right yeah, here. this is, yeah. And they, they have, they give them like, just like, you know, some number or something, uh -huh. but you can actually, if you find a whale and they'll actually link to the detail page, like when they respond to a comment saying, uh -huh. Hey, you helped science, you know, nice. da, 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 and then they'll link to the page. Here's your whale. And you can go and you can actually give it a name, like a nickname. Cause there's yes. this one whale that I usually demo who's, um, somebody named John Cena. And for some reason <laughs> that just cracks me up that there's this whale shark. That <laughs> <laughs> <It's a meme. laughs> So it's so awesome. So that's the only reason yeah. I know who John Cena is oh, because of the because meme. Because of the meme. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. But I just think that's so cool, right? Like, isn't that a better use than like using social media to like Instagram your food? In uh. this case, you know, you're using <laughs> social media and that's augmenting social the data. Yes. Yeah. It's using social media for good. I just think that's just such a interesting, like smart way to use social media. I um, I yeah. Know. Yeah. Uh. So, and the, uh, Oh gosh, that's another thing I should, I need to refresh my, uh, my, um, information because it was actually, I, I want to say it was net new, 80% net new data. So it was like new whale sharks and stuff that researchers hadn't been studying is what they're getting from these YouTube videos. Right, but the, the percentage of net new, it's just so much more massive, right? It's so much more than, than what it can scale so much right. bigger than what, uh, when they're just the research teams can do. So it's really, really cool to see how this is having an impact and how they recognized so many more, um, animals than they have any time previously, like using social media. So like, I'm, I think the work they're doing is so cool. Cause I mean, just the, the algorithm itself to recognize, uh, you know, individual animals, that by itself is cool, but then you add the social media layer, and I'm just like, this just blows my mind. This is so cool. So I, I love the work they're doing, and they have um, an AI for Earth grant, and we've been working with them um, oh, for a while, cool. too. And yeah. You're, and you're actually contributing to the science. The I industry. am not, actually. I d not. Let me be really clear. Okay, what's so, your no, role? the work, the work that, so for them, they're a strategic partner, so that we're just funding them. Oh, okay. But well, all so of the great work is being done. Yeah, there's, um, they have a team of biologists, they have machine learning experts, some, some folks uh, working on PhDs in machine learning. Mm -hmm. So they have a, they have a great team already okay. um if they needed help i'd be happy to help them but they're oh, they're but doing very very strong you, team you are an engineer on some of these teams, yeah right? i'm an engineer so my work is um th the, the engineering work that i've done is around some of these um other apis oh, okay. so there's a couple apis that kind of trend across a couple um oh, a more yeah level yeah level like level. kind of taking a level up and then building a couple of things that are useful so like land cover mapping is one example species classification is another and then like more so we have awesome. so yeah that's kind of some of the engineering stuff that we're doing so we're like trying to both um you know build our own kind of stuff but also like help you know support others so like that's yeah. the that's great because you can fund great work there and um how big is your team yeah. it's actually very very small um we have uh, two pms as well as a pm lead um and then maybe for technical people mm. like data and that's a mixture of researchers data scientists and engineers uh -huh. um are the the four of us so well, yeah pretty much everybody has their own pm yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well the thing is though it's not a typical it's not done in like a product pm type way right now it's like they're the, the pms mainly manage the grant program right. which i am so appreciative of yeah. because like my um my fabulous uh colleague bonnie is the one that like 
reads all of the grant applications oh, that yeah. come in, which oh, is uh, um, incredibly dull. It, I think, I mean, it's just, that's a, ch- that's going to get tired, a little tiring after a while, but she is just a champion and just, she's fabulous. So she does uh, a great uh, job. You mentioned uh, 2017. So you're about a year and a half into the team is about a year and a half into this five year um, plan, right? I wouldn't even say maybe roughly a year and a half. Um, I think it, it started with uh, in June. So, because we're in we're in uh, January right now, mm-hmm. um, so it's been about one year since the fifty million dollar announcement. Mm-hmm. Um, but then six months prior to that, the in June is when the team really started, and that was when I think it was only a two million investment at that point. Okay. And then um, that was in June, and then by December they had upped it to fifty million dollars okay. over is this five years. Just, are you just going to uh, plan to keep this on this track, or are you going to modify it each year? <gasps> um, we are doing. The, oh gosh, so what's the future of this program? I guess? Great question. Question. So, we're very startupy. Is that a word? Startupy. We're very. It now. <laughs> yeah, it the is first now. First time it's been used on this show. <laughs> we're very. We're we're very much trying to figure out where there are gaps and how we can help. Right. So, um, we started by like kind of defining some processes and making sure the grant program was there, and then education. And we actually uh, revised the um, how the grants were working because the old grant model when we give the um, some of the Azure credit grants, we were using these a- Azure sponsor accounts where people had to put in credit cards. And I don't mm-hmm. like doing that with like grad students and stuff right. because if they accidentally leave a machine running or something, I don't right. want to run up a right. grad student's you know credit card or whatever. Well, I don't want to run up anybody's credit card, right. but you know what I'm saying? So um, we found another, like we're, we switched over to these academic things. So a lot of it has been um, kind of getting processes up and running, um, doing some initial like engineering work. And we've built you know a couple models on our end. Um, we've done... Um, And now we're experimenting with things like different grant types. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, at the beginning, we were really just Azure compute credits. That's like all you could get was like, here's some time on Azure. And it was like uh, little chunks of that. But now we're we're doing so much more. There's a, um, a a data li- so some of the grants are cash where we'll give cash and fund things like grad students and such hmm. some of them are um, data labeling grants we will pay um, if, if you have really interesting data but you need it labeled so that's given a, that's you have human a intervention for yeah that? Okay. so you do they, need yeah they, uh, somebody to type that information in yeah so imagine you had like this you know um, maybe a camera trap which is a, a mounted camera that's taking ima- you know has a bunch of imagery and you need to, um, to to build your machine learning model you need um, um, a human to go through and and say okay this does not have an animal in it this does this does and like draw the bounding box around the animal if you want to do object mm-hmm. detection etc and then to identify what kind of animal it is uh-huh. for example to say oh this is a squirrel or whatever so to, to to be able to train a model to do that you need um a ground truth a labeled data okay. and so there's a data labeling grant as well to help do that and sometimes you could do something like very simple where anybody could tell the difference between like a couple basic animals mm-hmm. or sometimes it's very specific knowledge like recognizing certain kind of blight on leaves that's right. going to lead to like plant disease and it's not something that i could do right. but um we could hire somebody with a very expertise. specialized expertise in that area to be able to create labeled data so that we could then predict um kind of when blight on that on that particular plant would occur so yeah so sounds like a lot of fun it is very fulfilled. Like this is a lot of. It's really cool to see the impact that yeah. our um, that our grantees are having, mm-hmm. and just some of the amazing work that they're doing is um, is very exciting. And of course, it's always fun to. I I love machine learning, and I love building models, and so getting to um, apply my passion in such a, a way that is going to like make a difference is is very cool. That's awesome, and I love the fact that you're still uh, evangelizing and speaking. Yeah. Where are you going next? I'm actually going to Switzerland next nice. at the end of January, and then I'm actually very, very excited. I'm headed to Poland in March. I've never been to Poland. I've never been to Poland either, and I'm of um, partly Polish ancestry. Uh-huh. Um, my great grandparents came over from Poland um, through Ellis Island in like 1903, I think it was. Hmm. Um, and so it's really cool that like this is uh, my because they all they of course were from Poland and spoke fluent Polish, and then my grandfather spoke. Um, on my mom's side, spoke fluent Polish as well, and then it got lost in my mother's uh, generation. Like well he didn't still, teach her, and still like time to, uh, for you to brush uh, up. Like I don't think so. I, uh, I tried. Like I was doing some like uh, running a translator uh, app and looking, and there's just so many Z's. You need hello and thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always, I always learn those. <laughs> I know Stola is. Uh, What's that? It actually is. Um, it means um, hundred years, uh, okay. literally, okay. but it's um, it's uh, it's used to kind of like congratulate and kind of wish you know. Um, Good health and uh, hundred years, kind of like that. I think so, you mi- you might. I I actually, I, I just, if someone awesome. Polish is going to watch this and be like, eh, she's put totally it, going. Put this it wrong. in the comments. Put it in the comments, <laughs> please, <laughs> if you. Do, but yeah, but um, yeah. 
so very very minimal i got i do have to kind of brush up sounds like fun yeah Thank you so, so good to see you always good to see you Definitely. yes <laughs> We want to use technology to save the earth and help our friends.